and the Institute of Earth Sciences. His presentation is a geological record of oceanographic variability of the Antarctic front. Please. Okay, you. <laughs> Is it me or? Uh -huh. Dear distinguished guests, I'm going here through some ongoing projects in uh, oceanography and uh, volcanology and tectonics that uh, are linked to Iceland and the relation of Iceland to the, to the North Atlantic Rift. I will also mention a little bit the, uh, let's see here, we will start by talking about this area here, the Reykjanes Ridge. And then in the end, I will mention a little bit the ongoing projects on Westman Islands, which are here south of Iceland, and on Jan Mayen, which are here in the north. It basically are the, the, the uh, sub-aerial volcanic areas in the, the North Atlantic. Uh, marine research south of Iceland. In 2007, we carried out a very uh, large mission that was focusing on the connection of the Reykjanes Ridge to, uh, to Iceland and uh, one of the things that we were uh, interested in is these V-shaped ridges that, were, that had been described earlier on the Reykjanes Ridge. Uh, this is the bathymetry of that mission, so you see it was quite extensive and we focused then more extensively here on the active part of the ridge, but these uh, track lines here, the, the survey lines, they go about, here we are, here we are at about uh, 24, 25 million years. So we are looking at the evolution of Iceland for the last, roughly last 20 million years. Uh, one of the things that we observe is that here is a, a, here is a uh, magnetic image of uh, line 17 here. And we see that the anomalies that we get in here, anomaly 5, which is about 9 million years old, and anomaly 6, which is about 20 million years old, we see that they are slightly further away from the rift axis if we go to the North American plate compared to the Eurasian plate. And uh, that is, uh, in a way, a, a strange thing if the, if the uh, rifting axis has been in its place throughout this time. Basically, this means that the, the rifting axis has been moving and uh, most of the time the rifting axis has basically been adding material to the North American continent, that is the North American plate, on the expanse of the Eurasian uh, plate, except for the, very last, uh, uh, for the very last relocation, where it seems that the Eurasian plate is getting, uh, taking back something from the uh, North American plate. Uh, from this we can calculate, of course, the age of, or the timing of these uh, plate boundaries re relocations and we get a relocation here around 15.5 million years, around 11.8, uh, around 8 million years, 6.5 and roughly 3.7 million years. So, and this, of course, when we see this out in the sea, the advantage of studying this in the sea is that we don't have any sub-areal uh, complications because all the magma that's coming up in the sea is not going to flow anywhere, it will freeze above the eruptive vents. So comparing this up to Iceland, basically our reference point is here, is this blue line, and this is the, the, the relocated, uh, that's the old uh, rift axis that we have been uh, looking at. And we see if we take a, a full path, this is a, a five meter grid for the, the Icelandic continental shelf here, and we still see some scars in the continental shelf, which basically can be linked up to these rift relocations that we, uh, that we observe here south of Iceland. Uh, 
connecting this to Iceland. This is the image which we had before this mission. Basically, there were uh, basically three major rift three locations that had been documented within the Icelandic uh, the succession in Icelandic geology. But basically, when we reinterpreted this with uh, data from the the mission in 2007, we see that we have one axis out here, out of the Vestfjord. There's another one crossing here, the Vestfjord Peninsula. There are two axes here linked to the Snæfellsnes area. There is one axis running up here, Kvalfjörður, and then we have the current axis here. So this this has been this is work under uh, this is uh, uh, research in progress. So we are still reconfiguring this. And one of the latest ideas that Hauker has is the, that the uh, rift jump towards the American plate is basically the, what we call today the Western Volcanic Zone. Uh, modern volcanics, that is the active volcanics, this, this is the ridge axis here, coming up to the, the Icelandic continental uh, margin here, and, and driving up to Reykjanes uh, Peninsula. We see the peninsula here, we see the shallow part of the ridge, which basically is built up of uh, volcanic ridges, which are from two to uh, 150 to 200 meters uh, high, almost reaching the surface, and then we plunge into the abyss as we go off the, off the Icelandic continental shelf. There is a very interesting spot here, at, at the very, at the very uh, spot where we leave the Icelandic continental shelf, and basically this is the first central volcano that ever has been observed on the Reykjanes Ridge. We have several central volcanoes up in Iceland, and the difference from a central volcano and a normal rift environment is that we have magma accumulation in the crust which can develop major volcanoes and major volcanic eruption and caldera collapses. And we see the caldera scarp here, so there is at least one caldera collapse at this major volcano, and then on, the, uh, on both sides of the volcano, we come into the normal uh, rifting environment of the North Atlantic. Uh, the historic activity on the Ray Tennis Ridge is uh, fairly well uh, known, basically because of, of priests and scholars in Iceland that have been describing, the, the basically, uh, describing all major events uh, during the year. So we can go back almost to the 13th century, that's to the beginning of the 13th century, to our time. And it turns out that during the historic time in Iceland, we have had at least one eruption out on this part of the ridge, that is the, the part that is on the continental shelf, uh, the continental shelf of Iceland. However, uh, this is one of the area where we would very much like to collect more cores and uh, because of my colleague that was here uh, ahead of me. The cores here, they will uh, enable us to uh, pick out the tephra layers and thus we can date much better the volcanic activity along these ridge. The, 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 the advantage of the, the volcanism on the continental shelf is basically that it's relatively shallow and most of the time it becomes, that is, it breaks the seawater, that it comes into the atmosphere and then it generates tephra that will be laid out on the either side of the ridge. And that's what we are after when we are quarrying. Now the Westman Islands, we have been working there for several years. And this is the, the new bathymetry map of the island, which uh, reveals several uh, volcanic vents here, uh, submarine vents in the Westman Islands. One of the, the, the interesting results here is that all these vents, they are subaerial basically meaning that they are erupting somewhere at the end of last, uh, last glaciation. So, and, and the, 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 the eruptives that date before, that is, uh, that which are within the glacial period, they, we do, do not see much of them, except the major ridge that we see here. The Westman Islands, they have built up a major ridge and are in the, the, the are in the, uh, are in the, the, phase of building up a central volcano. Now we have been doing some chirp, that is very high frequency seismic measurements through the, the loose sediments uh, around Westman Islands, and in them the black bands that we see here, these are tephra layers, and eventually we will be able to core them, but we need a fairly good core, 
corner because this is 40 meters, that's this part of it, so we need to be able to get quite deep into these, these layers. But by coring and picking out these layers, we will be able to date the volcanic activity of the islands uh, to a more greater precision than we have today, and better, thus better understand the volcanic activity in the area. Uh, recently, we have start, started similar studies in Jan Mayen, where we are uh, connect, uh, connecting subaerial volcanism here on the island to the, the cores taken around the, the, the Jan Mayen Islands. And uh, this has been giving very interesting results. For example, this island here, we, uh, we, we, we discovered through our research here that this is the erupting site of 1732 on the island which before had been thought to be somewhere up here in the mountains, mm -hmm. but definitely this is the 1732. And uh, also this summer we discovered the deposits from an eruption 1818 that took place just offshore Jan Mayan here. So we found the tephra layers here on, on land. And we are of course trying to connect this with the, the cores that we take uh, around Jan Mayan. This core here is taken at 150 kilometers away from Jan Mayan. And basically, we don't have very many, many tephra layers when we go so far, because most of the time, Jan Mayan eruptions, they are basaltic, so they do not generate any major tephra blooms. Yes, so, so basically the bottom, bottom line is that we are, of course, trying to use the, the oceanic sediments to help us to better constrain the volcanic chronology in the North Atlantic, because the vegetation in the north, uh, in islands like Iceland and Jan Mayen is fairly scarce, which means that it can be very difficult to date some of our volcanic products that are on land, especially if we come closer to the end of last glaciation, when both islands were uh, practically uh, without any vegetation. So this is a collaborative work with many people, people from Hawaii, from the Marine Research Institute, from uh, the, the Coast Guard, from the uh, Road Authority, etc., 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 Bergen, uh, and, and many others. So, thank you.